Intercession has always been a crucial component for us when preparing for our gospel campaigns. I learned the importance of intercession as a young man, and I learned it in a way that I could not easily forget. As a young missionary in Africa, I visited a certain mission station. It was a very hot day and I was very thirsty. So I drank water from a well, not knowing that that water was polluted. Shortly after that, I became very sick. Fever was raging in my veins day after day. Day. In my delirium, I had some hallucinations. I saw something like a black blanket floating down, descending on me, and I thought, this is death, I am dying. But suddenly, I heard a voice, somebody praying for me. It was the voice of a lady in my father's church. 8,000 kilometers away, there in North Germany. She was pleading to God on my behalf to spare my life. And that moment, the fever broke. I slowly recovered. I wrote a letter to my father. I said, please go to that lady and ask her what happened to her on that date. When the reply came, I was deeply moved. That lady said, that very specific day, the Holy Spirit woke her up early in the morning, saying to her, intercede for Reinhardt. He is dying in Africa. She prayed for hours until she said she had a breakthrough there in Germany and my fever broke there in Lesotho. That day I learned something about the power of intercessory prayer. It works. Let me give you four points on the requirements of an intercessor. Number one. A true intercessor must have some standing with both parties. As I have already said, we know people, but we must also know God. Abraham is a good example of someone who knew God. The cities of Sodom and Gomorrah had become morally perverted, so God proposed to remove them. He said, shall I hide from Abraham what I am doing? When Abraham learned that these two cities were listed for destruction, he took up their case with God and went a long way along the road to saving them. He was qualified because he knew God and the cities. He was called the friend of God. Why? James says, Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Yes. And he was called a friend of God. Mm -hmm. Believers, they are to be his intercessors. Mm -hmm. That is what scripture means by a friend. Jesus said, no longer do I call you servants, but I have called you friends. Mm -hmm. For all things that I have heard from my father, I have made known to you. A friend intercessor will have the mind of the Lord who tells us nothing for mere interest but for us to pray about it. Number two, a true intercessor is moved by feelings of concern. The story in Exodus 32 is a strange episode but shows us the heart of a true intercessor. Moses was angry over Israel's idolatry. Mm. Israel had escaped from Egypt after a fantastic display of omnipotence that would make God seem physically near. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
Above them towered Mount Sinai with its cloud of God's glory concealing Moses who had ascended to speak with God. The people thought he had deserted them. Their simple minds were soaked in the superstitions of Egypt and its gods and so they made a golden calf to lead them back to the house of bondage. The Lord said he would put an end to them because of this appalling lapse and begin a new nation through Moses. Moses' first reaction was to send swordsmen to rid Israel of the ringleaders. Then his pity overcame his anger and he besought God to save the nation God called a stiff-necked people. Yes. Then in Exodus 32, Moses called them your people. Mm -hmm. Moses pleaded, Oh, these people have committed a great sin. Yeah. Yet now, if you will forgive their sin, but if not, I pray, blot me out of your book which you have written. Yeah. Here words failed him. Such was the force of his compassionate outburst. Mm -hmm. He offered to die as an atonement for Israel's sin. His offer was turned down because only the Son of God could atone for sin. But this is still an example of true intercession. This proposal was unsolicited. Moses had not been pushed into it. He had brought this rubble of tribes to nationhood like a woman bringing a child into the world. They broke his heart, but he still defended them from the inevitable disaster of their own folly. Yes. We pray for Christian revival. Why? To see the church full, pay the bills, ease the labors of evangelism as a religious mm -hmm. duty. Look at the pitiful attempts of Christless people to save themselves, making their own impotent gods. Mm -hmm. Let us weep for them. Mm -hmm. Let us cry out to God. God is moved when our hearts, not just our mouths, are moved. And now my third point. A true intercessor has faith. All the great prayers of intercession in scripture were triggered heavenward from the launch pad of faith. Faith is assurance of the changeless character of God's goodness, believing he is faithful to what he says he is. Faith is faith in God, not just faith in a miracle happening. The great Bible intercessors didn't always see what they asked for. God heard Abraham, but in the end, the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah were destroyed. Pray on and leave matters in God's hands to do whatever he knows is best. And now number four, a true intercessor delights in praise and worship. Throughout the intercessory psalms, there is not a single instance of honor to God being omitted in some shape or form. The one psalm of unrelieved gloom, Psalm 88, makes no petition and offers no praise. But intercession rises to God on the wings of worship. Requests and praise are two sides of the same coin. Psalm 105 verse 3 says, Let the hearts of those rejoice who seek the Lord. Intercessors don't come to God being offended about what he has not done. Mm -hmm. Moaning is not praying. Mm -hmm. Our burden for the world's needs is lifted as we pray in remembrance and thanks for what he can and will do. The Lord's Prayer begins, Our Father, hallowed be your name. That is the beginning of all true intercession. And the end is, For yours is the kingdom and the power 
and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I exhort first of all that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be given for all men, for kings and all who are in authority. For God our Savior desires all men to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. To save a nation, you start with intercession. That is where half the work is done. Someone else may stand in the limelight, preaching the gospel, while you are in the back room supporting him or her with prayer. But those are the kind of people that God notices. Pray on.